Hello and welcome to the second episode of Rufus Eats Cheese. Today I thought we would go a little continental. We have four lovely cheeses today. We have, um, they're similar but different. Same, same but different. Um, I'd like to start with something a little special, a little different, something I again had never heard of. We had this last time. This is the wonderful Appenzeller Sichuan from Northeast Switzerland. So it's made in the classic Alpine style. You kind of you look at it and you think, yeah, it could be it could be Gruyere, it could be Pompete from France or something like that. It does have little holes in it, if you look. A few little holes. And oh, which you won't get on there. It has a really strong smelling rind. Really strong. So this one has, if you look on the top here, see our Appenzeller, Switzerland. This one has been matured for four or five months. So it's a lovely looking cheese. Now, you might not know, the most of the Alpine cheeses um, are what they call brined cheeses. So when the Appenzeller is, um, washed in brine it's actually a herbal brine so it's one of the um colonel sanders type closely guarded secrets um no one apparently knows unless you're you know chief brine rinser for the cheeses so this is a herbal brine um and then um after a couple of months at the dairy it will move to a cheese cellar and there it will be tended quite regularly, probably rinsed with salt and all sorts of stuff. So I think the most important thing to do now really is to taste it. Now I laid these cheeses out. I've been keeping these cheeses uh, in the fridge because I don't really have anywhere better to keep them. Um, the house is probably way too warm to just leave them. Um, but I thought I'd bring them out a bit early so that they had time to breathe and relax and warm up a little bit. But it seems there's a little piece missing off the end and someone has used a cheese knife and I thought oh well maybe I took a little nibble off the end just to check it and I forgot but then all the other cheeses also have a little piece missing so I think we have a rather large female mouse in the house we might have just had a little nibble on this anyway Let's try this one then. So, now the smell of the rind is very potent. It, it's almost so strong I can't describe it because I can't be near it that long, but the, the cheese inside is far more buttery. It's also quite flexible really. So let's give it a try. It's good. Um, okay, it starts with quite a strong flavour. It's not particularly salty cheese, but it is quite full flavoured. And that then seems to calm down into much more creamy, buttery kind of notes. And then the aftertaste was quite strong again. Hmm, I'm going to try that again actually, much as it pains me to eat more cheese. I'll just try and lift this little gold 
Hold foil off here. There we go, and I'll try, maybe if I didn't need that enough. Let's have a, a slightly larger piece on there, I think. It's beautiful. It's really nice. It has all the the nuttiness that you'd expect from something like Gruyere. Um, but it stays with you. It's, um, you get this lovely nuttiness and then this creamy, buttery, I think a lot of the, hmm, that is fabulous. Uh, I think a lot of the, um, a bit of foil left, there we go, a lot of the flavour is coming from the rind. That's wonderful. Let me try one more piece, just for you guys, and I'm going to take off the rind. I, rather, I like the rind on this, despite the smell. So this is a nice, clean little cube of the Appenzeller, it's a Schwab. Uh, mm. It's quite different without the rind. Almost got, almost got some pepperiness to it. Hmm. Almost a little pepperiness there. Not quite. Hmm. That's a great cheese. That's definitely going on my, oh, I should probably buy some more of this cheese when I have a bigger fridge. I have to say the foil's a bit of a pain, but nice to know that it's been, the gold foil here is particularly for the Sichuan, and it shows obviously the name, and it also says on there that it has been matured for four to five months. Um, I like when they do this stuff and stamp cheeses and stuff like this, but it's actually with the foil, because it's so fine, so thin, it is a little bit fiddly. So I'm gonna nick that bit of rind that I dropped off. Mmm. Oh, that's really good. Mmm. Moving on. We have here the one and only Comte. This beautiful Comte here. Um, this is um, a reserve Comte that has been um, aged a bit longer. It's a special reserve one. Um, Comte is from um, the Jura region, which is a Jurassic mountain formation in eastern France. Uh, the it's uh, it's all, all the with all these cheeses. I think they they all have a protected um, uh, protected designation. So they you you can't just I can't just go and buy some milk and make some cheese and call it Comte because it's it's illegal, um, which is good. Um, so this Comte is in fact two years old. Oh, this has been matured for. 24 months. The Comte cheese is in fact, um, they have a thousand years of documented uh, history making this cheese in um, the Jura Massive region. Um, they, they, they pretty much nailed it after a 
thousand years of making the same cheese every day. I'm like, yep, yeah, I think we've, I think we've got it. So, uh, as with the other mountain cheeses, the um, there are quite strict um, requirements uh, as to um, what you're allowed to do when you produce this cheese. So. Um, you can only use the milk from um, two breeds of cows. Uh, I believe it's Montbelliard and uh, Simmental. And um, the cattle have to be eating grass in the summer and then proper real forage of hay in the winter when they're housed. Uh, you can't feed them any kind of compound feed, you know, if you're not um, not into livestock and stuff there. Um, you can get like um, whole foods for uh, your dog or your cat, like whole crunchy biscuit things. You can get a similar thing for cattle and sheep and everything else. You're not allowed to feed those. They're only allowed to have hay or grass or clover or whatever's growing, like if they've cut the spring meadows there's going to be a lot of flowers in there and everything all that goes into the milk and gives and adds to the quality of the cheese excuse me um uh, there's also um some requirements uh, regarding the fat content of the cheese of the milk to make the cheese so they actually uh, skim some of the milk and then they add that skimmed milk back to whole milk to kind of dilute it. Uh, so the fat content drops a little. Um, this allows them to quite closely control exactly how the cheese is going to come out every time. Um, the... Um, the cheese is also graded, so at four months, um, a, a proper cheese inspector will come check the cheese, uh, and if it's not up to scratch, it doesn't even get sold as Comte. You can't even, you can't even, you can't make rubbish Comte because it just won't be of a high enough standard. It won't receive its mark. Um, and that's that. So you know if you're buying it, it's going to have at least um, a minimum standard. Um, yeah, wonderful cheese. I think I need to stop talking about it and, and eat some actually. The rind on this, it's similar looking, similar looking rind. Um, but it's drier for a start. It's quite a dry rind. Um, and you can see possibly because it's it's um, matured for so much longer the um, the darker coloration spreads into the cheese a little here so I think this is going to be fabulous this one let's give it a try tighten up the cheese wire oh, oh I've broken it right there oh well okay here we go. Um, yeah, they obviously cut this for me at the shop, but the colour inside. So that's the colour that they cut, and that's what I've just cut. So there's a slight, I don't know if you can see it or not, there's a slight difference. So this is much brighter, more buttery looking. So let's give it a try. Mmm, oh my word. I'm sorry, I'm a bit lost for words. I love Comte cheese. Anyway, this is the first time that I've tried the 24 month matured reserve Comte. Oh, that is fabulous. Right, I'm going to have to have some more so I can try and contain myself and describe it to you. Okay, let's uh, try a smaller piece.
Mm. So like all nice content, it's firm, really quite firm. Um, it's nutty. There's a slight acidity. I'm also picking up a very slight, very slight crunch. Which I eat here, maybe tyrosine crystals in there. In the cheese. Mmm. Comte is a wonderful cheese. If you, um, if you want to buy some, you can buy it almost any supermarket now. Um, I highly recommend Little Cheeses. Um, if you have a little near you, they um, their food they don't they don't sell crap because the, the Germans basically just don't tolerate crap food. Um, so their cheeses and their meats actually, continental cheeses and meats are excellent and you can buy a nice piece of comté at quite a reasonable price it won't be the reserve most likely it almost definitely won't be the reserve but oh um a great way to start eating this magnificent cheese well so i've completely lost my train of thought i was so blown away i'm gonna have a little tiny piece more just to make sure wasn't a fluke or anything and you can see how much harder the edge of the cheese is here mm. Mm. forget hydra we get VR. Wow. What I need to be working on is some way for you guys to be able to taste this through my YouTube channel. That would be that would be technology worth using. Oh. There's a lovely um I want to say it's a salty flavour, but it, it's not really salt. It's if you imagine um, the crust on a nice bit, a nice bit of bread that you've then toasted, and you get a far more. Um, a far more uh, condensed, compressed kind of flavour from the crust than you do from the other bread. So the bread's, the bready bit's nice, and then as you move out towards the, uh, the, the crust, you get this much more intense flavour. That is what this does, and it's, oh, incredible. Beautiful cheese, beautiful. Right, now then. Under here, um, actually, I might be chewing another, another cheese. Under here, we have something equally special. Ah. Now, this is only a small piece. It's not because it was particularly expensive, but I actually bought a piece uh, to film for you, and um, I ate it. So I had to go and buy another one. So it actually meant that I bought, I had to buy some extra cheese because I ate the stuff I was going to film for you. Anyway, uh, I'm sure that can be forgiven. Uh, the names of research. Um, this is the rather lovely um, Reserve Gruyere Le Crepe. So another beautiful mountain cheese which is oddly enough broken in almost exactly the same place as the other one that's interesting so rind on here not quite as dense and hard as the 
um, content. The rind has a nice flavor. It almost smells. You can almost smell the cow. That sounds odd, but I'm almost getting sort of hay and um, barn and stuff, but in a good way, not like the rind on the um, retorta I had last time that was a bit, yeah, this is pleasant hay barn, but very gentle. Uh, it also has that nuttiness as well. Um, another beautiful looking cheese. So Gruyere as well has um, its own um, history, its own um, protected designation of origin. Um, the thing I find quite remarkable is how you can make mountain cheeses, European mountain cheeses, in more or less the same way and they're all different. You make the cheese the same way, using almost the same techniques, everything else, and the differences in how it's produced are really quite tiny. And the process of maturation, the care, obviously the forage that the, um, the cattle have been grazing on makes such a difference. I mean, even the the um, the um, makeup of the water, the mountain streams, the air, and the geology, all of it goes into making something that is really quite unique because the Comte is lovely, the Appenzell is lovely, they're not really that similar apart from in appearance and there's some similarity in how they're made but they're they're quite wildly different cheeses, really. Again, this is another brine washed um, cheese. Um, it's put in after the truckles. That's the, the name of the freshly um, molded curd. So it's been um, placed into a cheese mold. Uh, the way it's been let out, so it's been drained and it's been pressed. Um, these are pressed, I believe, for 24 hours um, then they are put in brine for 24 hours um, it's then uh, rubbed scrubbed if you like with a brush with salt and salt water um, during its maturation process and it will be turned uh, and graded and everything else so the other thing I know about Gruy I don't know if we're lucky enough to have a piece on here I think I've got top to bottom rather than an edge, which is a shame. I think I've, I've got top and bottom here. So this cheese will have sat this way, inside the wheel of cheese. But on the edge, around the edge of the cheese, will have been stamped in Gruyere. It will also have been stamped with the date of production uh, and also the um, uh, the particular dairy that produced it because there are many in the region that are all producing fine gruyere um, there's also a very uh, important extra step which is interesting um, the cheese has to be taxed so that the cheese is inspected and it is then um, given its rating uh, whether it is a cheese that we're going to like, yeah, I'll probably eat it quite soon. Or, like, oh, this is a good one, we're going to keep that for a while. Um, and, um, yeah, without that, it can't receive, it can't use its name, which is interesting. Um, anyway, let's dive in. Let's see what this is like. Okay, again, interesting, this one isn't, I suppose it's a slightly different colour, now I've cut it fresh, 
So a fresh cut on there, slightly different colour, not as marked as the comp down. And the rind here is not as um, pronounced, but I think this is this is obviously a younger cheese. Actually, mm. Mm. That's lovely. Much creamier, much more buttery than the uh, Comte. So it has that nuttiness, but I think of kind of nuts and cream and butter rather than nuts and salt and cheese. The interesting thing with this cheese, um, some of the cheeses that we've tried, the, um, you get a very strong initial flavour which then develops and then it changes and then when it's gone and you've swallowed it, you have an aftertaste. This Gruyere Reserve seems to taste the same, to me at least, from the first bite. Let's have another piece. And try again. Perhaps it's need enough. Definite evidence again of a slightly crystally. Tyrosine crystals or um, a little bit of acidity and bitterness in a good way not not too much but the, the flavor hasn't actually really diminished at all it's still the same intensity um, Yeah, when it does finally start to fade, um, the nuttiness goes and the kind of butteriness stays with you. So, really nice. It's quite a clean, fresh, buttery uh, flavour. It's not a, it's not a kind of heavy, salty, buttery flavour. It's quite a fresh, buttery sensation. It's almost mm. that's a tricky one. That is tricky. So those changes are quite subtle. Oh, that's good. That's good. I think I'm going to need to taste more Gruyere. Okay, finally. This is a beauty. Now this one looks like a Swiss mountain cheese. Perhaps Swiss mountain cheese um, it is cut in a slightly different way. You'll see it's actually cut. If you look at the Appenzeller here, it's cut that way, and this one is cut this way, which is interesting. And this cheese is called Lincolnshire Poacher, and it's actually an English cheese. So. The makers of this cheese um, set out to uh, create a cheese that was, if you like, uh, a cross between um, uh, a continental mountain cheese like the Comte or the Gruyere um, and uh, an English cheese such as cheddar. Um, so you can kind of think of this as the um, European love child of uh, some of the finest cheeses in the world so yeah it's pretty awesome it's pretty awesome cheese I have had this one before again 
I bought it when I bought the other piece of Gruyere and um, with some friends though, I didn't eat it all myself. We did actually finish it all. So this is also a replacement um, with the, um, the Gruyere. Um, oh, something I haven't told you, I don't know why I've mentioned it. All four of these cheeses are unpasteurized. So the uh, milk is raw, it's not been pasteurized prior to making the cheese. Um, most of these cheeses, once the um, rennet has curdled the milk to form um, curds and whey, um, or junk it, the, um, uh, the grains are then cut to a very fine size, so they're about the size of a little grain of wheat very, very little. When they're happy with that, um, most of them are then heated. So um, this one, the uh, Lincolnshire poacher is heated to 41 degrees and I believe the Comte is heated a bit higher. I think that's about 50 degrees or 55 degrees. Um, so they're not pasteurized, but they are partially heated. So, um, I think we should tuck into this one and have a look. So, let's have a shifty. I might need to, this is quite a hard cheese, this one, so I might need to take a few attempts to get through. Just gonna cut the rind down, because that is quite tough. I don't know if you can see there, the rind is almost papery. It's almost like taking paper from the outside. So, again, I believe this is a brine washed cheese. So, it has some very fine heritage from both sides of its family. It has um, well, if you look at the texture here, it's a little more the way it's broken. It's a little more granular, so it's it's opened a little bit more like a cheddar than say the Comte. Um, so there does seem to be some, I wouldn't say grain to it, but definitely, definitely something going on in terms of its texture. Um, again, the piece that was cut is a more, is a darker buttery color. And the fresh surface I've just opened there is a little lighter. I put those two together. So let's um, let's give that a try. I'm gonna try a piece from the middle. So I have cut quite a big piece, so now I wouldn't want to eat too much cheese in one go. Um, let's give it a try. Firm, dry. Hmm. Oh, some lovely acidity. Really nice, like um, like a really nice mature cheddar, but it also has that nuttiness of its um, its kind of uh, European Alpine heritage. Then a little bitterness, but in a good way. good I quite like the combination I'm not saying that I would want to exclude any of the alpine cheeses or cheddar for that matter because um, I'm a big fan of cheddar but definitely a lot more bitterness going on um, much more salty flavors um, something I might not have said but I think it goes for all of these I'm not sure about the Appenzeller but the um, 
the uh, linkage approach of the Greer and the Comte, I believe all of them, um, they take the milk from the afternoon milking um, and store it chilled. Then they, um, in the morning, when they do the new milking, they, um, they take the chilled milk from the day before and mix it with the warm milk from the morning milking and that becomes their starting place. Now, I'm wondering if maybe it started a long time ago Pardon me with them wanting to make, obviously if you're gonna make cheese, there's no point making, you know, that much cheese because why would you? So most of these things are done on a reasonably large scale. I think most of these were five or 6,000 liters of milk at a time. A good size starting um, point that can still be managed by one or two people. So you can have um, a master cheesemaker working up to five or 6,000 liters of milk at a time. Go back to this one. I think I'm going to need to try this poacher again. I'm going to try it with a bit of rind as well. So let's take a reasonable piece. Let's try this. Mmm. Oh, that's quite different with the rind. Wow. Um, that's very interesting. With the rind, this tastes far more like a continental cheese, far more, and it's from the same sort of stable as the Gruyere, the Comte and much less like a cheddar. But if you take just the cheese without so much of the rind, very taste more cheddar-y. That's very interesting. Mm. This could possibly be, this Lincolnshire poacher could possibly be The ultimate cheese. You've got a cheese that is two different cheeses depending on how you eat it. I'm gonna try it again just in case it was a fluke. So one more piece. So I've got a piece of rind on the end, a bit of rind, reasonable bit of cheese to go with it. Much more continental with that rind, a staggering difference. I'm not getting any of the bitterness, maybe a touch, but it's way back, way, way back there in the, in the kind of palette of flavors I'm being offered. Um, it's a totally different cheese when you eat it with the rind. That's incredible. Wow. So, One more time, we have here the uh, Appenzeller Sichuan. We have uh, the Reserve Comte. We have the Reserve Gruyere. And we have the, wow, the Chameleonic um, Lincolnshire Poacher. So um, all unpasteurized, all in an, uh, a sort of continental alpine style, uh, but with this one having a little extra something as well. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.